Hello, everybody, and welcome to My Thoughts Exactly. My special guest today is New York-based cabaret artist Deb Berman, who's just written her first children's book, Nine Months in the Play Womb. That's womb, not room, a funny play on words. The book is wonderful. Now, before I get to my Zoom call with Deb, Herman Plushke seems to have written a book, too, a book about magic. I didn't even know Herman Plushke knew any magic. He asked me if he could be on the show, and I said, sure, why not? So let's cut to Herman and see what he has to say. Hello, I'm Herman Plushke, and welcome to the world of magic. For today's trick, I'm going to show you how to make this pencil float in the air by saying the magic word abracadabra. Are you ready? Watch closely. Abracadabra. Ooh, I bet you didn't know how I did that. Now, if you want to know my secrets and how to do these magic tricks, pick up a copy of my new book, Herman Plushkey's The World of Magic, Volume 1. All my tricks are in here, all four of them. I'll show you how to guess a word in a book, or how to write a check to pay your rent in disappearing ink. That's the best. See you next time, everybody, and pick up a copy of my book. Go to a Barnes & Noble. They don't sell it, but they make great coffee. Did that really happen? Let's get to our Zoom call with Deb, okay? Hi, Deb. Thanks for joining us today and being on the show. Charles, it's so good to see you. I always adored you, and I haven't seen you in three years, and you look um, as handsome as ever. And so do you, and it's, I miss you too. We had some great times together back then. In the, the Thank you. Yes. Yes. Yeah. You, I want to talk about your book. Your book, Nine Months in the Play Room, is a funny, charming, beautifully illustrated, and a quite educational children's book. Tell the viewers a little bit about the story of Nine Months in the Play Room. It would be my pleasure. Um, this is my uh, debut journey into writing children's books, and is an idea I had a very long time ago. And the narrator of the book is an umbilical cord and aptly named Billy. And Billy is sort of like the butler to the embryo, the fetus inside the womb. And because he's a butler, I put a little bow tie on him, which you will see. And um, he makes sure the baby is taken care of in the womb by making sure it eats and it sleeps and it gets exercise and he's the teacher. So Billy is speaking now. Mm -hmm. I'm attached to your belly button. Yes, this is true, but I'm also very attached to you. Uh, I connect to your belly button. One day you will see an innie or outie. Which one will it be? And then, you know, what kind of belly button do you have? But how did you come up with the idea of Billy the umbilical cord? Did, your, did I read something about your son having a little bit something in that? <laughs> yes. Uh, my son was born over two decades ago. And in, in the delivery room, his father was taking tons of pictures to my total dismay. You know, fast forward about a week later, I was looking at the pictures and there was this one picture of the baby being delivered um, and the umbilical cord was still attached to the both of us. So my son was about four years old. I was in the kitchen cooking. He was in the living room playing with his Legos. And he came into the kitchen and said, Mom, where was I before? And I said, you were in the living room. And he said, no, Mom, where was I before I came to Earth? Uh-huh. I took a second and all I said was, oh, um, you were in my belly. He said, I was in your belly. I go, yes, you were in a little room called the womb. And he goes, uh, what was I doing in there? And I said, you were, you were growing. You were getting stronger and stronger so you can come to earth. And he said, I was in there all alone. So he looked so scared. I started to improvise and said, no, of course not. He said, who was in there with me? And I said, 
the umbilical cord. Right. And he went, the umbilical, the umbil <laughs> the umbilical, the um broccoli. And I said, let's just say Billy. And that's how the book in my mind came to be, but it wasn't a book. When my son was, um, let's just say in his 20s, moving out about two years ago, you know, I was letting go of my little boy and I started thinking about all these lovely things that happened in our lives. And I remembered Billy and those stories. And I said, I'm going to write a book so I can hold on to my baby. And that's how it came about. 20 years later, it was the longest friggin' delivery anyone ever has. And it was we, the longest labor of love anyone ever has. Now, you've have you ever written before aside from children's books? Did you dabble in writing on other things? I did work in publicity. I was in the music industry, you know, working for various record companies and, and publishing companies. So I used to write press releases mm -hmm. for like Julie Stein. And that's about the only experience I had, but I knew I could do it, you know. Uh, the book is beautifully illustrated by Girdra Sen, is her name? Is I'm saying that correctly? Girdra yes. Girdra Sen. Yes, uh, may I show you the book? Yes, hold up the cover for the audience. Great, nine months in the play womb. The, the inside story. The inside story, yes. It's a fantastic, beautifully illustrated book, great story. But how did you and, and, and Girdra get together? How did you uh, meet? Well, being my first time as an author, I really didn't know what to do. So uh, I went on a, a site called, I don't even know how to pronounce it, Fever or Fever, mm -hmm. F-I-V-E-R-R. -R, oh. And I discovered that they had hundreds of children's illustrators. So I went through about two or 300 of them, wow. you know, to four in the morning. Uh, so when I picked out three, I wrote to them and I asked them each to uh, draw me uh, a cartoonish, sweet, wise looking umbilical cord. Wow. And Girdra was one of the three and I loved her umbilical cord. So I hired her. The first two weeks were difficult and I couldn't understand why it was so hard until I found out she lives in Lithuania and she doesn't speak English. Oh. I created a draft of all the script and clip art and then I would give her direction. And she would have a neighbor come over and translate what I wanted, and then she would send it to me. And it was really funny because, like, I would send her something like this, right? That was the clip art. And of course, she would send me back something like this, which is a big improvement. When I asked her to create the mom who's going to be pregnant, this is what she sent me. There's something not quite right with this mother. She does not look like a New York City 25, 35-year-old woman. Right. And improving. I don't know if this is true, but maybe the fashion style in Lithuania is a lot different than the fashion here in New York City. But at least that's what the mom ended up looking like and dressing like, which was more to my satisfaction. Gidra was incredible. Rob Lester is also credited on the cover, and I know Rob from the New York Cabaret scene. He's a great guy. What was his participation in the book? Well, Rob is a reviewer, as you know, and he's a fantastic writer. I finished about 75% of the book, and I really felt that Billy and I were way too close. <laughs> I know Rob as a friend and as a fabulous writer, so I brought him in. We were meeting at a diner once a week in New York City, sitting with pages and pages of illustrations and poems and you know rob is uh, a whimsical has a whimsical style and he was perfect so his contributions were so good and it was lovely to feed off somebody besides me and billy alone so it was me billy and rob and i loved it and, uh, i had to put him on the cover because you know he's so clever and he helps so much one of the things I like about your book, it's great for an expectant mom, as you said, or uh, on, your we on the website, I think you mentioned this, to teach their child in an easy way. They could read this book to a three-year-old or a four-year-old that has a brother or sister on the way because they don't know what's going on inside mom, right? In this yeah. You know, I wish I told you I had this grand plan. I did not. I just told my son this silly story and he loved it. And when he was leaving, I wanted to kind of document it in history. And um, 
Only when I finished it did I realize, wow, exactly what you said. This is so good for pregnant women so they know what's going on in a very entertaining, fun, and educational way, and for pregnant moms to read the story to their young, young uh, other children who are going to have a sibling. And now I started marketing it to uh, obstetricians and pediatricians. Book. And um, they're using them as gifts. Oh, and I had a grandmother write to me telling me what a thrill it was for her to read to her three-year-old granddaughter. So I'm working on a sequel um, about the development of the child, the, the one-year-old, the two-year-old called uh, From the Womb to the World. Nice. And then I'm working on a, a totally different type of story, a little older child. So I will get to it, but I want to make sure that this book <laughs> is successful. Now, if one of our viewers or many of our viewers or all of our viewers wish to get a copy of this book, how do they go about buying one? Mm -hmm. So I don't have it on any other site except for www.playwomb.com. And on there is a lot of, uh, it, I, I had a, um, a video, an animated video created, there and I called on all my friends in the music industry, like Jeff, Jeffrey Stoner is uh, a friend of mine who's an actor, singer, writer. He is Billy. That's how he talks. And he's a nurturing soul. And, and Sean Harkness, the guitarist, yes. he, he created the composition for the video. And Joanne Halib, who's a voiceover uh, artist and a cabaret singer, is the narrator. Right. And um, Steve Bustamante is the vide videographer who did a wonderful job with it. So and that's all on the yes. website. Well, thank you for being on the show. Um, oh no, well, it's, our time is up? Yes, I have, I'm so sorry. It was, it's been a wonderful interview. Thanks again. It's fantastic having you on and we wish you all the best with this. I'm so glad we had this time together. I love you, Charles. Have I a wonderful you. day. Bye-bye. Thank you. Bye-bye. Well, that's our show. I hope you had a good time. I certainly did. Pick up a copy of Deb's book. The holidays will be here before you know it. Oh, and join me next week when my guest will be Ryan McCurdy, the new Executive Artistic Director of Savannah Repertory Theater in Savannah, Georgia. We'll be discussing a lot of things, but most of all, how to run a theater during this challenging time. Bye, everybody. Thanks for watching My Thoughts Exactly, and see you next week. Oh, and thanks to all my new subscribers. Bye.